Expectations. Before consuming any piece of media, you form some type of expectations for it within your mind. Expectations for certain shows can be high because of their popularity. Maybe a friend or family member recommended it to you, so naturally you expect great things from it, and if it doesn't meet those expectations, you feel let down. Then there's the other side of the spectrum, where you go into a show with much lower expectations. Maybe somebody you know has said that it isn't good, or you've seen the low ratings that the general population has given it. Despite that, you decide to watch it anyway, but have very low expectations, not expecting much from it. If it exceeds those expectations, you're happy, and if it doesn't, you aren't surprised. Expectations don't have to be about whether something will be good or bad, though. You can have expectations for what a piece of media will entail based on the title and summary of it. For example, before watching ZOM 100 Bucket List of the Dead, I had a general idea of what it would include. I expected a zombie apocalypse setting where the main character Akira will cross stuff off of his bucket list, things he wants to accomplish before he either becomes a zombie or dies. It's obvious from the title alone. It was a fun show that literally did that, although it definitely surprised me with some of its deeper moments. Overall, I ended up really enjoying ZOM 100. Another example that makes the expectations for the anime well known for the viewer is Cautious Hero. The hero is overpowered, but overly cautious. You should know just what to expect from it. An overpowered main character, that's cautious. I mean, the word cautious is even in the title twice, so it's not rocket science to expect Saya to be over the top with it. Having expectations for certain genres isn't even a thing that's done. For example, I usually expect certain episodes to happen in romance anime, like a beach or pool episode. Going into every psychological work, I have higher expectations for it since that genre is one of my favorites. Even if I don't love that piece of media, I still expect to enjoy the psychological aspects of it. By following the same expectation for those shows that I just went over, going into the anime Wandering Witch, The Journey of Elena, I thought I knew what to expect. From the title, key art, and synopsis, I expected a nice, cozy, wholesome journey for a hardworking, newly fully fledged witch named Elena. She's going to explore the world, interacting with different people, learning their stories, while also creating her own in the process. It's a fancy adventure show, so I thought there would be a good chance that I like it since I like both of those genres. So specifically with my anime list synopsis, it does say that she experiences both the bright and dark sides of the world, but even with that, I did not expect this show to be that dark. I just assume that the description is exaggerating a bit. Maybe she has to fight a villain or a murderer or there are two or three moments that are dark, but even in those moments, I don't expect them to be that bad overall. I mean, how dark can an anime with this type of whimsical and colorful art style actually be? Oh, okay, apparently the answer is very dark. That's what this anime does. Wandering Witch The Journey of Elena subverts your expectations in several ways by not only having a wildly fluctuating tone differing what you'd expect from the show throughout it, but topping itself time and time again with how dark it can actually get. You never know what type of story you'll see next. This leads to a wildly refreshing watch that keeps you on your toes. Many will enjoy it because it's different, but for others it can also be off-putting, forcing them to drop the show entirely. I decided to re-watch Wandering Witch The Journey of Elena, so I already knew what was going to happen. I'm not a person who usually re-watches shows, but what is nice about re-watching something is that it lets you pay attention to smaller details that you may have missed the first time around, potentially gaining a greater appreciation for that work. So really quick for those who haven't watched the anime yet, let's do a quick summary of the story. Wandering Witch The Journey of Elena follows a young prodigy witch named Elena on her travels, obviously. While Elena was growing up, she spent much of her time reading The Tales of Nikkei, a book about a renowned witch and her travels. Elena was so fascinated by the book that growing up she desperately wanted to become a witch. She studies extremely hard, eventually becoming one, and now wants to follow in Nikkei's footsteps by traveling the world experiencing both the bright and dark sides of it. And before you ask, yes, Nikkei is literally her mother, so Elena is following in her mother's footsteps. Now known as the Ashen Witch, because of the color of her hair, Elena details several stories of her travels, even being able to experience similar ones to her mother. These unrelated non-chronological stories recount her experiences as an observer over the course of several years, some being lighthearted and cozy, while others are extremely dark in nature. The first way this anime subverts your expectations is in the stories of Elena's travels, never knowing what will actually come next. When I say that, I don't mean where will she go next, I mean what type of adventure will it be? Will this adventure be a darker one or a more positive one? You never quite know if it'll take a different twist at any point. In Wandering Witch The Journey of Elena, she experiences both the positive and dark sides of the world. 
Going into it, most people, myself included, expect it to be just a cozy, lighthearted fantasy adventure following Elena's travels, and to be fair, a decent chunk of it is. Throughout her travels, she learns of various people's stories and creates her own as she learns more about what type of person she is. Episode 1 is a good introduction to the series, showcasing why Elena wants to travel the world, the trials she goes through, and how hard she works to achieve her dream. Then episode 2 is a nice lighthearted adventure where she gains a new friend and eventual witch in Saya. Even the beginning of episode 3 seems like a nice innocent story about delivering flowers to somebody. You think to yourself, hey, this is going to be a fun, cozy, fancy adventure. Time to kick back and relax. However, you get sucker punched throughout the anime. In episode 3, there's two different stories. One is about parasitic plants and the other focusing on slavery. The natural reaction to those episodes is okay, the show just randomly got dark. So I should modify my expectations a bit to include the possibility of some grimmer narratives. But there's no way that it gets worse, right? Maybe this show is one of those cases where all the heavy hitting parts are thrown in early on to retain an audience and then it mellows out as it progresses. Well, I'd say that the very next episode, episode 4, gets even worse. Now you start to think, okay, we've had back-to-back -back dark episodes. I'm expecting the possibility for more from now on, but it can't get worse than what's in episode 4, right? I mean, it's difficult to get worse than learning of Princess Mira Rose's tale. She watched her lover and child be killed, which leads to her losing her sanity and exacting revenge on the person who ordered it, her own father. She cursed her own father, turning him into this giant monster that ended up eating all of his subjects. This is where I think Wandering Witch The Journey of Elena does a fantastic job. It does a great job mixing in nice and comfy stories when they are desperately needed amongst the ones that are darker and harder to process. Every new story may not be as enjoyable as the last Last, but the variety is what makes this anime really good. Wandering Witch The Journey of Elena can be filled with difficult subjects and stories, so it's nice that if you are able to stomach the topics in episodes 3 and 4, you are met with a reprieve. The next couple of episodes give you time to relax and fortify your mind. Episodes 5 through 7 play, they are lighthearted and fun adventures, the ones you expected going into the series. Elena visits the Royal Magic Academy and the Land of Truth Tellers. She then experiences two rivalries end with the story of the Giant Wall and competing vineyard villages. Those episodes are similar to a pit stop, a place where you can stop, refuel, and prepare for the remainder of the series. They are much more cozy, putting you at ease, hopefully helping you to put the dark stories from earlier in the back of your mind. Episode 8 is up next, which is enjoyable. You get to see a different side to Elena, who is usually calm, cool, and collected, but here she is pissed. This episode centered around dolls isn't really dark, but more so creepy. Then my favorite episode for the series is shown episode 9, which is definitely not for the faint of heart, and one where I will go into more detail. When you see this type of warning, you know you are in for a wild ride, and in the case of Wandering Witch, The Journey of Elena, even more so. This warning was displayed before episode 9, and up until that point we've watched three different stories that were all dark in their own way. Four if you count the creepy doll story, but in my opinion, this one blows the others out of the water with its surprise. A financially struggling Elena luckily stumbles across a lucrative paying job posted by another witch named Estelle. Elena has told the story of Selena, the second district murderer, who was Estelle's best friend. Selena's parents were murdered when she was young, which led her to be taken in by her uncle. She was abused by him and eventually snaps, killing him. This, however, doesn't quench her thirst for blood, so she continues to kill others until Estelle puts an end to it by killing her. Estelle wishes to help her best friend out by traveling back in time to save her. This won't save Selena in the current timeline, she will have still died by Estelle's hands, but this will provide Selena with a future in a different timeline where she can be happy. Ultimately, Estelle feels extremely bad for having to kill her best friend and hopes to decrease the guilt she feels since she thought she could do more to help Selena. The amount of magic required to pull this off is immense, so Elaine is there as an insurance policy. By linking her magic pool with Estelle, she is able to give her the ability to continue using magic, just in case something goes awry, which seems unlikely in this case. Elena, after hearing this heartbreaking story, seeing a fellow witch in need, and noticing that the risk is minimal, since the idea seems very well thought out with a short time limit involved, accepts the job. However, this job was not worth the massive reward, which she ends up never claiming. Estelle had it all wrong. Selena was being horribly abused by her own parents, which made her kill them. During this time travel mission, they learn that Selena is a horrible person with murderous intent even before what was assumed to be the actual cause. 
The amount of hatred emanating from her is insane since she was already lost to the darkness. Seeing this bloodthirsty crazy girl shocks not only Estelle, but Elena as well. Estelle loses her cool since she spent the better part of three years researching how to time travel to help Selena when it was all in vain. She's so angry that despite lacking magical power, decides to do the extreme, foregoing all of her memories of Selena to muster enough magical power to kill her yet again. The last seven minutes of episode 9 are absolutely insane, dark, and extremely well done, capturing the situation perfectly. In this episode, we see yet another version of Elena that we never really get to see throughout much of the anime, a vulnerable one crying her eyes out because of the trauma she experiences. To finish out the rest of the anime story after this dark encounter, we, the audience, are met with two episodes that are lighthearted and fun, which are much needed after what transpires in episode 9. The final episode, which I think is a great way to end the season, showcases a scenario where Elena is able to meet different versions of herself. These other versions of her made different choices while on their journey, and show just how those changes affected her. There are versions of Elena trying to hide from the darkness in her heart, a love-struck version, and even a ghoul version of Elena, to name a few. As humans, we naturally think about various choices we make, and whether or not they were right, while simultaneously wondering what would have happened if we chose differently. Seeing that idea in an episode, especially one filled with the choices Elena had to make throughout the anime, was amazing to watch. Wondering which the journey of Elena also subverts your expectations in regards to how you would expect Elena to act in the situations she finds herself in. You might expect her to be a hero for those who need her to be. However, Elena is not a hero, nor does she ever claim to be one, even though she always talks highly of herself. If you are expecting her to step in and help everyone she comes across since she is a powerful prodigy witch, and it'll be easy for her to do, you should look elsewhere. For the most part, she is just an observer, only stepping in when it directly affects her, or when it seems a fellow witch needs her help. You have to remember that Elena made three different promises to her mother, and she does listen to them for the most part. These promises were, if she's ever in danger, to run away. She was told to not think of herself as someone special, she is the same as everyone else. And finally, she is told to eventually return to her mother and talk about the adventure she had. These rules are in place for self-preservation, just because she is a prodigy witch does not mean she should underestimate things. Most of the complaints with this anime stem from the fact that people say that Elena is a terrible person. And yes, she is flawed but at the same time, that makes her feel more real. There are far too many examples of the main character of an anime being perfect, so this is refreshing. Yes, she isn't a great person, but she is visibly struggling to make some decisions, figuring out whether or not to intervene. From early on in her travels, one of the biggest lessons she learns is that things aren't always the way they seem. The world isn't all sunshines and rainbows. In the case of every dark story she comes across, that's the case. In the episode focused around the stories of giving flowers to someone and slavery, episode 3, it seemed like what she was helping with was good, but in reality, it was damaging to others. In the following episode with the princess, she thinks that a monster showed up and destroyed the city, but it ended up being darker, deeper, and more personal to the princess than just that. And finally, with episode 9, the story of Selena, she tries helping a fellow witch to save a person who is already unsavable. These experiences help to shape the type of person she is, and at least to some extent, I think she's afraid to act because her choices didn't go the way she wished they did. Those promises with her mother, along with the outcomes of some of her adventures, leads Elena to take on an observer role and nothing more. She doesn't want to be hurt or be the cause of hurting somebody else. Yes, she can definitely do more than what she actually does, but just because it seems like the right thing to do doesn't necessarily mean it'll work out the way you want it to. Since this is a rewatch, let's see what I previously gave Wandering Witch The Journey of Elena and say whether or not my rating for it has changed. According to my giant anime spreadsheet, I gave the anime originally a 7.5 out of 10. I think to some extent I was a bit harsh with that rating. I feel like I enjoyed it much more this time around and I'm changing my rating to an 8.25 out of 10. I would have liked to see more from Elena and what she's struggling with throughout her adventures, especially in those darker stories. Some of her adventures were more enjoyable than others, but such is the nature of the idea. Not every story will be an instant 10 out of 10, some of them just need to help mellow out the overall tone of the series. Overall, it was a fun and unique adventure that keeps you on your toes, and I would love to see more of them. I keep going on and on about how much I enjoyed the show and the cool or interesting parts about it, but I won't here unless you'd want the video to be closer to an hour long and way more in depth. I encourage you to watch the series for yourself if you haven't already, and hope that this relatively quick review enticed you to do so. That's it for the video, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. This anime rewatch was voted on by my community, so keep an eye out for more community posts, and I'll see you guys in the next video.